This is the story that's been dominating the sports conversation and beyond sports ever since Saturday night. Calls for a ban of court storming after the incident at Wake Forest in which Duke's Kyle Filipowski, from what we know, avoided a major, major injury but still has a sore knee after colliding with a fan. His head coach, John Shire, yesterday, one of many who was saying the time has come to get rid of this storming of the court. Absolutely. We shouldn't wait until next year or something should be done right now. At the end of the day, players and, and coaches and, and officials are the only people that belong on a court. So that's what he said. Kansas coach Bill Self told ESPN yesterday, let's get rid of it totally. I don't see the positive impact from a visual standpoint. Our game has excitement and people are excited about college basketball so much. Court storming isn't as big of a positive as a potential negative that exists with somebody getting hurt or lawsuits. So those are some coaches. How about some media voices that you need to hear from? How about Michael Wilbon on PTI? This has to stop. There's no other opinion. Any other opinion is stupid and lazy and ignores the safety of the athletes and the fans. I've heard people say, oh, they should just delay it 30 seconds and let the fans... So fans have been hit by goalposts. Fans have trampled each other. This is stupid. It's got to yeah. stop. There's one thing I love about my friend, Mr. Wilbon. He will tell you what he <laughs> thinks. <laughs> Uncle Seth, no relation. Seth Greenberg is up with us this morning, and we borrow Chris Canty from ESPN Radio One Sportsman like every weekday morning, coast to coast. I've not heard from you. I'll yeah. start with you. And Of course, this, and I want to keep Harry in this and you as well, because this we've all seen it. It happens in college football as well. It's a different dynamic, obviously, because of the size and dimensions of the field, but it's the same basic idea. Where are you? You hear these people saying, get rid of this, keep the people off the field and off the court, what are you saying? Yeah, something has to be done about court storming. Now, from a practical standpoint, I don't know that it makes sense to try to keep fans off the court or off the field because I don't know that you're going to be able to keep college kids off the court or off the field after they've been, you know, drinking and carrying on in these stadiums, in these arenas. I don't know that that's, that's something that could actually be pragmatic. But what I will say is this, they do need to beef up security in situations where you can anticipate a court storming happening. And this is not the first time that it's happened for Duke this year. It happened in their upset loss to Arkansas earlier in November. And so that's something that everybody involved has to do a better job in. And that includes the players and the coaches, the assistant coaches from the team that's trying to get off the court. Well, look, I mean, we all understand the games where these are going to happen. It's going to happen when Duke loses. It's no going to happen when Alabama loses. We all know that it happens. But to be clear, I want when you say you can't stop this from happening. But it doesn't happen in the NFL. It doesn't happen in the NBA. They can stop it They don't there. have student sections so in why, the NFL or the NBA. I understand that, that but I yeah. mean, you, you can tell the students what they can and can't do, and you can enforce it if you choose to. No, I, I'm, I'm confused as to why you say you can't stop. Well, tr well, trying to enforce things on a college campus or even at a college sporting event, I, I just don't think it's the same level of decorum that you can anticipate when you have a professional game where you have season ticket holders and that, that kind of fan base. So I think the dynamic of the fans that are in the stadiums or arenas absolutely play a role in it. But let's also not pretend like the players don't have to have some more awareness in those situations as well. What do you mean by that? Well, well what we saw from Kyle Filipowski, he's acting like he's going on a walk through the quad on campus where you see that there are fans that are storming the court. He has to have more awareness of the situation and have urgency about getting the hell off the court. Now, I think that they have to do a better job of creating a plan and having that in place. And I get that we don't want to put the onus on the visiting teams, but that has to happen. Wait a minute, hold on. I'm sorry, I have to push back on you here. Go Chris. ahead. You're telling me that it should be the player who's who's who. His place is on the court. Sure. He's allowed to be on the yes. court. Yes. He was involved in the play where the game ended. The yes. buzzer sounds, he's on the court. Yes. You're telling me the responsibility needs to be on him to avoid this onrushing crowd as opposed to the crowd not not damaging the player who belongs there and these people who don't belong there are the ones who should not have the responsibility. I'm confused by where you're putting the responsibility. Greeny, I'm putting the responsibility on everybody involved. 
I'm putting the responsibility on the coaches. I'm putting the responsibilities on the universities, the stadium people, the securities, the arena people. I'm putting the responsibility on everybody to try to keep the players and the coaches of the visiting teams as safe as they possibly can be. As a player, you've got to have awareness, and I know that we always talk about that with in-game situations, but you also have to have awareness of the environments that you're in. And in that situation over the weekend, I don't think Kyle Filibowski showed that level of awareness. Let me get Seth in here because you talked about that a lot on Saturday. Again, you, you were a college – for those who don't know, Seth coached college basketball forever, and you, you had one game where your team at Virginia Tech beat Duke and there was a court storming, and you talked yesterday about all the planning that went into that. Where – where are the responsibilities in all of this, Seth, to make sure it doesn't become a problem? Yeah, I don't put it on the visiting team in terms of how quickly they get off the court. Yeah, I mean, could he have gotten off the court quicker? Sure, he could have gotten off the court quicker. But you know what? It's responsibility when you go into someone's house. It's responsibility of the people in that house, their liability and their responsibility to get the players off the court safely. And that means when you say you know, you can't stop it, Chris, you can stop it. You can have some things, uh, things in place. Here's the thing. In life... Society in general, you've got to have agility, whether it's business, whether it's coaching, or whether it's a situation like court storming. I used to be a huge proponent of court storming. The world has changed. All right, I keep on saying, cell phones, kids are running on the court, they're, they're looking at their cell phones. They have less respect for others. You see the one guy just push Kyle Powski, Phil Powski in the back. There's a lack of respect for other people. We've got to find a solution to the problem. A couple things you can do, and I talked about the other day, obviously you can have a grace period. I think the other thing is, you know, you say you can't solve the problem. How about in the student section? To have a right to come in and get your seat in the student section, you've got to sign basically a contract. And the contract is there's behavioral aspects to the contract in terms of when you get that ticket, there are certain things expected of you. I don't care if you're 18 years old. I don't care if you're 20 years old. I don't care if it's a student section. You know what? Right is right and wrong is wrong. And the lack of respect that the fans had for the Duke players to get off the court safely isn't right. It just have, you've got to understand the world has changed. You've got to have some semblance of agility to change with the times. One Skeptical, Chris. No, I, was just, I, don't, I don't think students signing a contract saying that they're not going to engage in court storming is going to deter that behavior. I guess my whole point with Kyle a is, there is your team has already gone through this this season. You should have some level of awareness like, hey, court storming is a thing, and until we have better tools in place or a better plan in place, then I've got to take some of the onus on me to get the hell off of the court. Let, let me that ask you a question. To happen. Uh, let me, uh, again, and Harry, I'm sorry, I'll get you in in a second, I promise. But, but let's just say you're in this situation. You're a college player, which you yeah. once upon a time where you lose a very close, hard-fought, tough game. And some fan comes running up to you three seconds later and yells something in your face. Is, is, do you think you would have had perfect restraint? And I mean, that's what this kid is obviously doing at Filipowski, the first one. When, when we beat, I was at Northwestern, okay? Yeah. 1988, we beat Indiana, the, the defending national champs. I ran out onto the court to celebrate. You know what I didn't do? I didn't run right up to Bob Knight and start yelling in his face because yeah. he would have punched me and I would have deserved it. That's the point. I would have deserved it. So if you run out there and Kyle Filipowski is defending himself and gives you one of these, I'm the last person <clears> in the world to advocate violence, but I'm telling you right Right now, you deserve it. If you run up to a player, you want to go out and celebrate with your friends? Great. You run up to the these players who just lost a game and you're kind of getting in their face and rubbing it in, you're asking for whatever. Yeah, happens. the emotions of it all makes it a powder keg. I mean, not only the emotions of the fans that are celebrating, but the emotions of the players on the losing team, which is why you have to have a better plan in place than what was displayed at Wake Forest over the weekend. That's why security staff from the arenas needs to be involved, the coaching staff, not just the head coach, but the assistant coaches need to be involved, but you have to also make players aware of the situation. Again, plan in place, you're going to go to your team bench. You're going to be escorted to this exit once the game is over with so we can get you players out of harm's way. What was displayed on Saturday was egregious. It was a breakdown across the board. All I'm saying is that the players can help themselves by showing more urgency in getting out of the way because court storming has continued to be a thing throughout collegiate sports. Let me hear from Harry. Go ahead, Harry. Yeah, I think one of the biggest points that we're all missing is that if the NCAA wanted to cut down on this, they actually could. But do they want to? Do athletic they don't have directors to say that, really Harry. want to? Be it's not an NCAA oh, okay, issue. It's a, but, it's a commissioner's level issue. Go ahead, Harry. Well, that, that was going to be my next thing. All the commissioners, do they really want it to stop? 
because when you see the visuals, and I was a part of being at college game day at Tennessee, where you had Tennessee winning that football game and a lot of people stormed the football field. When I mean it was crazy down there, I was in the midst of everything that y'all are seeing right now, and it was insane. But when you look at that visual, that's what these commissioners, these ADs and company, that's what they love because it's a selling point for them. And it's a, it's one of the differences that you get in college football, college athletics from professional sports. So I agree with some of what, what Chris Canty was saying earlier. When you have uh, NBA teams, the NFL teams, yes, it's a reason why you don't see that. Because at the college level, this, these are students. Uh, you have season ticket holders. When you look at the NBA or the National Football League, you have calmer fans. That's one of the things that I've noticed when I cover professional sports versus college sports, the passion and how much they really love their university and their teams. And these students, man, they, they grow up living for these opportunities for their, for their universities to be the major blue blood team so they can have uh, the luxury of being able to storm a quarter or a football field. I, I got a question for you guys. I got Go a ahead, question Seth. for you, Grady. Uh, you guys are two great players. There's a question, Greeny, you just asked a second ago. You're walking off the court, and some guy bumps into you, and you just kind of push him away. You know, you're, how big are you, Chris? Six what? Six, six eight, seven? 350 pounds. All right, six, eight, 350 pounds. You just throw him to the side. He falls down, all right? Who becomes the bad guy? It's the athlete. And that's why you have to have a level of awareness if you are an athlete, knowing that you're going to be treated differently, knowing that you've got to try to put yourself – out of that situation as quickly as possible. I get it. It doesn't sound like there is a perfect solution for the issue. And I'm not trying to pass the buck or saying that it doesn't need to be addressed because it absolutely does. I just don't think it's realistic or it's practical to say that you're going to eliminate court storming altogether. I